A really useful feature I see in Windows Server, and this goes back to several versions of Windows Server, I'm on a 2022 server currently, is to create a server group. Creating a server group allows you to manage other servers all from one location, and you can create multiple different groups for multiple different reasons. So if I click on create a server group, I get the wizard that shows up, and I have lots of different options. I'm gonna to choose to add in a YT Server 2, I'll choose to add in YT Server 1, and you can see there's other servers in here as well. But there's multiple ways that I can bring this information in. I can go into Active Directory. If I know the name of that server, then I can go ahead and find it that way. I'll just type in the first few characters, and it found my storage server. So I'll go ahead and add that. I can also go to DNS and type in the IP address of a server. And there's the IP address of 210, and it found my domain controller. And then if you have your servers into a text file, you can go ahead and add them in here as well. But you'll need to make sure that you put commas in between and format it in the way that Microsoft likes. You can certainly check that out at learn.microsoft.com. Now I'm going to put in a server group name. So I'll just type in my servers as the name and click OK. And I'll click on my server, so it's just appeared in the left-hand side, and you can see the four different servers that have just appeared. Now, if I right-click on these servers, you can see lots of different options that I can do. Since DC1 is a domain controller, I can go in and I can manage Active Directory from here. I can run a lot of these different diagnostics if I'd like to. I can do a lot of different things that you may not have realized you could do remotely right from Server Manager. If I go to YT Server 1, you can see that this particular server is not a domain controller, so it doesn't have all those different options. But here's one of the cool things that I like to be able to do, and that is to open up PowerShell. I can op open up PowerShell on that other server from the server I'm logged into now. And take a look when it gets opened up. You see that it shows up the other server's name. So I know I'm in that other server. I can even type in ipconfig slash all, and it'll show me that I'm on server one, even though I'm actually logged in to server two physically. And from here, I can run any PowerShell command as if I was logged in locally into server one. Some other options you can do is you can right click and you can choose to restart the server. And take a look, I also like to be able to do something called computer management. Computer management allows me to go in and look at lots of different things, such as the events that are going on with that server. I can open up Windows logs, take a look at all the different logs that are in here, create a task or look at the tasks that are going on, look at any shared folders. I can even look at performance monitor, which is really helpful, especially if you're having trouble logging into a server uh, locally, you can connect to it remotely and see what's going on with Performance Monitor to see if maybe there's a bottleneck going on with the server. And you can take a look at a lot of other different things that manage that particular server and make changes as needed. Server Groups in Server Manager is a simple way to manage other servers and clients all from one location.